Today I finally have the pleasure of reviewing the 2020 McLaren GT for all of you. And as this is only the second car to enter the United States, it's essentially a world exclusive first look where I'm going to go around not only the exterior and the interior features and designs, but also the powertrain, the performance specs, and talk a little bit of how this car compares with the 720 and the 570 and obviously its competitors over at Ferrari. I'm essentially going to offer you everything you need to know about this new 2020 GT in what is hopefully a very entertaining review. So let's get right into the video. Now this particular 2020 GT is featured in a very stunning, somewhat green gray color. It's very sparkly out here in the Florida sunshine. And while I'm not personally a huge fan of the look, it definitely does a great job of highlighting the free flowing lines all around the exterior of the McLaren GT and gives us a really good idea of how this model is going to look. Now, what I noticed first off when I came to the dealership today was that it's a far more simple design than we've ever seen from McLaren before. Obviously, they have a very clean, modern design language in general, but this GT really highlights the simplicity that McLaren offers with their performance models. So it's all just smooth, flowing lines all around the exterior. We don't have any unnecessary parts. There's no crazy vents all around the car, although we do have a lot of aerodynamic things here. What I'm really liking about the front end are these brand new McLaren headlights. They still have that same general McLaren design language to them, but they are also full LEDs with sequential LED turn signals and a black bezel inside of it. And that gives it a really good contrasted look, very modern, very sharp, and kind of sets the styling for this entire car that's modern and sharp. Now up here you've also got this very large gloss black splitter that's very similar to what we've seen on the 570. But we've also got a little bit of an intake right here that goes to some radiators to help cool that powertrain in the back. But right between these two elements, what we have is this cool little shark fin right here. And this looks very, very cool. My only complaint is that from some angles, it's a little bit similar to the C8 mid-engine Corvette. But all around, I am in love with the front end of this car. And as we continue onto the side of the car, we can see some highlighting lines that really flow along the side. Now this side really continues the theme I mentioned in the front where it's simpler and cleaner than McLaren's other models. So we don't have that dual skin door design on the 720 where there's an intake inside the door. Instead, it's just this beautiful flowing piece of metal. And obviously there's still dihedral doors. So you press this button on the side, they'll pop open and you can move them up just like that. And that is obviously a very cool feature that it really wouldn't be a McLaren without. But like I said, there is no intake through the middle of this door like we have on the 720. So instead, they've added a little bit of a port out back where it can pull in air for the intake and cooling and all of that. And obviously we still have that very large uh, McLaren essential intake on the side. Now, one last feature I'd like to mention on the side of this car before we talk about the back and hop into the interior are the wheels. Now, unfortunately, while there are a ton of different options for the color of the 2020 GT, there are really only two different styles of rims. You can have seven spokes or you can have 15 spokes. And obviously they're available with, you know, gloss black, chrome, different colors like that, but really only two different styles. This model features the 15 spoke wheels. Again, I like the design, but I do wish they offered a little bit more customization with that. Hopefully the lineup will be expanded in the future with more wheel options. And then to top off the entire design, the rear of the car gets a little bit more open and a little bit more aggressive to help cool that powertrain. You've got some very thin LED brake light strips back there, really cool design. And you've also got that rear hatch we're gonna talk about a little bit more in a minute as well as dual stainless steel exhaust tips, which are also available in chrome and issue forth a fantastic sound from that V8 engine. And speaking of that V8 powertrain, that's really all we can do is speak about it. There's actually nothing to see because it's all covered up by this uh, rear hatch area with the trunk and the cargo space and all of that. This is a GT car. So unfortunately that comes with a few sacrifices such as seeing the engine. But if we take McLaren's word for it, beneath all that gorgeous Napa leather, there is a four liter twin turbocharged V8 powertrain, which produces 612 horsepower and 465 pound feet of torque which is essentially the same as the powertrain we've seen in McLaren's other models. Obviously, they're following that twin turbo V8 formula that has worked so well for them in the past. And the power output at 612 should fall between the 570 and the 720 as a good mid-range model. 
And even though we can't see that powertrain, it still performs very well. McLaren says it should propel the car from 0 to 60 in just 3.1 seconds and help the car reach a top speed of 203 miles per hour. So clearly, it's the impressive performance we've come to expect from McLaren. So clearly, McLaren did a fantastic job with the extra design and the powertrain and performance aspects of the 2020 GT. But remember, the name is GT, not some random number like all their other models. And that stands for Grand Tour, which means not only is the exterior and the powertrain and performance and all that important, but it also has to be balanced out with the luxury and comfort in the interior. And you do get the best of both worlds with this car. It is a fantastic powertrain, but it's also a fantastic interior. I'm totally sold from the moment I got into this car. It is far more comfortable than any other model McLaren has ever produced. Every surface you see is going to be wrapped in this gorgeous, soft red leather that flows so freeform over the climate vents and the controls in this car. It's really a beautiful design up on the dashboard and it really continues flowing onto the door panels and finally to these seats. Now the seats are perhaps the most important and most impressive part of the GT's interior. They do offer the same exact design that you're gonna find in the 570, so nice and lightweight with very aggressive side bolsters, big enough for pretty much anyone who wants to sit in them, but they offer something above and beyond the 570 because they've essentially taken those same seats and added far more cushions. So you've got the soft leathers, you've got the aggressive side bolsters, but it's balanced out with the cushion in these seats. Very, very soft and plushy, and they really just form around your body when you get into this car. And they're also available with 10-way electric power adjustments and heated functions. So all around just a great design with these seats. My only complaint is that they're a little bit hard to adjust. The buttons to adjust the driver's seat are actually on the right side of the seat, kind of crammed next to the center console area and beneath the different memory buttons for the seat. So they're actually incredibly difficult to get to and use, especially because you can't even see them. So, you know, you gotta have a little bit of a trade-off with the performance and the luxury. Again, it's a balance of both worlds. I'm also a pretty big fan of this steering wheel design. It's, again, pretty similar to what you'd find in any 570 or 720, which obviously they didn't need to improve it because it was a great design to begin with. So it's wrapped in the same soft, gorgeous Napa leather. I like how they kind of have a dip on the back of the steering wheel for where your fingers are supposed to fit. It makes it extremely comfortable. And they've also upgraded the paddle shifter design. So in the 720 and the 570, they've got like these little matte plastic design that connects to the back of the steering wheel. Here in the GT, they've upgraded that plastic to a really shiny uh, aluminum type chrome metal. And it's actually a really cool design. They look like knives coming out of the back of the steering wheel here, which I think is really cool. And they come with that same feature in every McLaren where not only can you pull them back, you can also push them. They're in kind of a lever system where they're both connected. So love the new paddle shifters. And right behind those paddle shifters, you're gonna find the first piece of technology I'd like to talk about, which is that 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster. Now it does not fold up and down like in the 720, but that's all right because it comes with very clear graphics and a great design all around. And speaking of technology and screens and things like that, they've also upgraded the infotainment system for the 2020 GT. This is the first model to feature the new McLaren infotainment system. It is a seven inch touchscreen, and they say they've designed the graphics after something from a private jet. What that actually means, I have no idea, but I'm sure they did a great job with it. I was pretty impressed with the last generation of infotainment as well. Other than that, there are a few last important features I'd like to mention. First of all, they do offer an optional panoramic electrochromic sunroof. We saw that in my review of the 720 Spider. if you wanna go ahead and check that out. Essentially, it can dim or brighten itself automatically or by pressing a button or however it works, uh, which is a really cool feature to have. I definitely recommend checking out my 720 Spider review if you wanna check that out. They've also added three cup holders in this interior. Remember, there are two passengers, so you can have more than one drink. Each passenger gets an average of one and a half drinks by my math which is plenty more than you should need. Again, they are a little bit small, but it's that McLaren trade-off. Yes, it's comfortable and luxurious and functional and practical, but it's also performance oriented. The GT is based off of a new generation of chassis called the Monocell 2T. It is a carbon fiber monocoque that wraps around the entire car. And while it's very safe and performs very well, it does limit the interior space a little bit. So that's why the couples are a little bit smaller and why you don't have room over here on the sides of the seats for the adjustments. But what it doesn't really hamper too much is the cargo space. Once I pop 
the rear hatch. You can see there is plenty of cargo room back there. And again, it's wrapped in that glorious soft Napa leather. So a great design back there. There's clearly more space than the 720 or the 570. And it also features a soft close rear hatch. So all around, I am very impressed with the interior of this 2020 GT. So to conclude this review, would I take the 2020 GT over a Ferrari or a Lamborghini? Heck yes, I would. McLaren has done a fantastic job of balancing the performance and the technology with the comfort and luxury of a true Grand Tour. And in general, I think this is going to help redefine the GT segment for decades to come. And if you guys enjoyed this review, make sure to check out the review I did of the 720 Spider or the 600 LT by clicking on one of the video cards right there and subscribing to my channel. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching.